Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. This is going to be a nice little vague um, general overall idea of what I think beginners should be doing on Dead by Daylight. And it's going to cover a wide spectrum of things, nothing too specific because I didn't want to make one of those kind of guides. Um, yeah, I hope you like it. I hope you can take something away from it, whether you're just starting out or whether you're a bit more advanced and need a bit of refresher on a few things. Um, yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe, and we'll jump straight in. And yeah, I'll see you at tip number one. Tip number one is always look to learn, always look to adapt, and always look to improvise. Um, this game is all about um, constant evolution of yourself, um, learning new things at all times. You'll find as you start out, you might start with a slower pace. Um, you might be a bit more cautious as you begin to learn, which is understandable and fine but um, some of the best thing you can do is try and jump into some of the uh, harder aspects of the game try and become that better player as soon as you possibly can um, and try not to be as fearful or scared of certain aspects as you uh, you probably would do at the absolute beginning um, after a while you'll figure out your best play style you'll figure out where your strengths lie, where your weaknesses lie, and don't be afraid to work around those. Don't be, don't feel pressured to become something you're not after you've given yourself enough time to figure it all out. Um, at some time, you'll realise whether you are best at running the killer, whether that's, or perhaps whether that's your most enjoyed part of the game. You'll figure out whether you're really good at being a gen jockey, jumping on general at all times, and hitting those great skill checks, hitting those ruin skill checks all the time. Um, you'll figure out your place in the game, you'll be able to work around that, you'll get a playstyle based around that and don't be afraid to put perks on, don't be afraid to use certain items or have a general playstyle based around that. Stick to yourself once you've worked out who you are on this game and it's only going to be better for you, it's going to help you survive, it's going to solidify you as a player. Um, yeah basically keep evolving keep trying to get better but after a while you'll figure out who you are and become better in those aspects and maximize who you are and don't try and copy anybody else make your own identity and become it and master it that's tip number one all right uh, tip number two is check out your uh, your content creators on YouTube, there's a lot of fantastic people out there who are absolutely great at the game. Better than, better than me, people like the aforementioned Noob3, um, Useless is great as well, a survivor. Um, but yeah, just check them out. Um, a quick Dead by Daylight search um, will get you the big names fairly quickly. Other people like True Talent, Otofu, Zubat, uh, Ma, Devi B. Um, the list goes on and on really, you can you can find plenty. Lots of people streaming on Twitch as well, if you check out Twitch and go in the Dead by Daylight gaming section you're sure to find high view counts on some really good people to check out. Of course check out the lower views of course, they probably need the support more than anybody else to be fair. Um, yeah just go ahead check out the YouTube channels, like subscribe to them, the ones that you like. Absorb what information you can from them, take tips, take their um, tricks, everything you can. And it's only going to make you better. It's what I did when I first started playing the game, and within like a very short time frame, I went from being an absolute newbie beginner to being somewhat competent. Of course, it's a constant progression of learning with this game, so I'm far from the finished product. I've got to keep learning, but it helped me out in the beginning to check out these people, and I'm still checking them out. I'm still learning things from people. Uh, it's one of them things. But yeah, honestly, check them out give them some love and it's going to be good for you. That's tip number two. Alright, tip number three is to do with generators. Um, every single map that you spawn into on Dead by Daylight will spawn a total of seven generators. Um, these are split up across the map in various locations. Um, generally speaking, you'll usually find on a lot of them there's three on one side of the map, three on the other and there's usually one more central. Um, best thing you can do when you first jump in if the circumstances allow you, such as if the killer doesn't spawn right next to you or you don't get into a, into a chase straight away, is to try and get one of those middle generators done as early as possible. 
As I show on the map here in the uh, the circles are your generators and I prioritize the middle generator in red as the highest priority target to go for. Um, what this does is, so let's say we go for the game, we start doing generators. Teammates, let's say we all do it on the left side, okay? We've got, we've got the two um, cyan colored generators, we've got a purple generator, we've got the red, got the red as well in the center. Let's say we do all them four to begin with. What that leaves the killer there on the right side is three generators nicely lined up, perfect for patrolling and making sure that you can't do one final generator because to get to the end game you have to finish five generators out of the seven to be able to power up the exit gate and leave. So what you're doing there is after four generators you're leaving yourself a free gen or a triple gen strategy depending on how you want to word it which gives the killer so much ability to pressure the team and probably uh, probably get a 4k, uh, 4 kills or 3 kills and so on, escapes for the hatch. But yeah, anyway, you don't want that to happen at all. Um, okay, so as i shown on this new updated diagram up here, um, let's say that the black pentagon is your starting location and the black lines indicate where I would suggest that you run to to try and get to that middle objective. General idea when you start in the game is you want to know where the killer is, what's safe to do, where to go, and etc. You want to keep yourself safe at the start of the game as well as try and get to your first objective as timely as possible. So running through these lines, um, the grey boxes they indicate um, jungle gyms, aka you'll see like lots of broken walls and windows spread across the map. Those are jungle gyms and they can be used to um, run the killer around effectively. But it's one of those things you need to get um, more experience with the game to learn how to use effectively. But for the time being, you'll see I tend to run through them. This is to give yourself a bit more, um, a bit more of a safety blanket in case the killer does appear. But yeah, just try and make your way to that middle generator as quickly as possible, and stop your stop yourself and your team from getting triple generated, because it's just bad news all around, and you want to prevent it. All right, tip number four. Is not be scared of the killer. They start in the game, a lot of new people will walk in like this, will probably crouch around obstacles, look around and stuff. Not the best play style to have. Um, sometimes the best thing you can do is just run in, jump on a generator, get stuff done. Yeah, I mean, the killers in the game, they're not. Once you kind of figure out what they're about, who they are, what they do, they stop being scary. They, re they really do, and all, all you need to do really is just get to your first objective as soon as, as soon as early as you can, and just start working on that uh, team objective. Um, it doesn't it doesn't take long. If you allow if you allow the killer to scare you, um, all that's going to happen is you're going to impede yourself. You're going to make bad decisions, bad times, and generally you're going to have a bad time. You take away the fear factor of killers and you'll think a lot more objectively about the game and how to go about uh, the one you're in right now. Tip 5. Make friends with the killer. <laughs> Betrayal! Tip number six is make sure you're using your blueprint offerings. Um, there's a lot of different different types. Um, they're all in the four categories of the game: boldness, survival, um, altruism, and objective. Um, for anyone starting, fifty percent bonus to that um, certain area of the game. Um, yeah, make sure you're sticking them on. It's, um, it'll help you level up a lot faster, get better perks. Um, learn more about the purpose of the game, therefore know more about the game. It does help you out generally. Uh, there's also ones that work over all categories, like the Ben Envelope and there's some others as well. Ben Envelope is 25% bonus to you and all your survivor friends. Um, we've also got um, the Escape Cake, which is a yellow um, cake icon. That one is 100% bonus blood points on all categories. And there's also a green bloody party streamer which is similar to the Bayon envelope, but it's 
100% and it also affects the killer as well as the survivor so everyone everyone's happy with that one um, but yeah stick them on level up get used to your new perks and get used to the game more the uh, quicker you can level up the better don't be afraid of ill efficiency even if you're new to the game you're still going to get the uh, full impact out of the good point offerings and it's going to help you in the long term don't make the mistake of I've done many times where you're left with like 14 in like these certain categories stick them on as soon as you get them and you know for a fact you're always only maximising your good points so do it don't make my mistake uh, tip number seven is kind of know what survivor to pick first and level up. A lot of different uh, options, a lot of different perspectives and uh, opinions on who you should pick first. Personally, myself, I'd probably pick one of these I'm showing on the screen for a variety of reasons and that's all dependent on what you find most important. Um, someone like Nia, Banner's Landing is like a really good perk, um, both starting out and more experienced to help you survive more in most maps. There's a lot of drop down areas on maps that you can expose with Banner's Landing. A lot of new loops you can make. Um, overall it's just very, very good for in your inner chase. Um, but also, there's also like Urban Evasion Weaver you can use, which is pretty handy for new starters, but it can lead to bad habits. Um, next up we got Dwight. He's got a brilliant uh, information perk in Bond, perhaps one of the best, because it shows you where your allies are, but more importantly, by looking at what the auras are showing you, how the how your um, survivor friends are playing, um, how you can see them playing through the auras. You can also tell whether they're being chased by a killer, whether on generators. If you're being chased by the killer yourself, you can also avoid your uh, teammates and stop the killer from getting extra momentum and stuff. So it's really useful. Prove thyself, gives you extra blood points. Um, but it doesn't go beyond a maximum amount now. Prove yourself. It gives you extra blood points when you're working with people in a generator for um, for teamwork. But there's a maximum limit to how much blood points you can get. That just helps you reach that max limit um, a lot sooner, which can help you get blood points quicker, especially Steiner. And leader, very useful perk for other people to help you out. So when you have leader, people can heal you faster. They can do totems faster when they're in a certain race around you. Sadly, it doesn't affect you yourself, but I've seen people use it. I've had, I've had the um, experience of using it for pe on people. Like they've had leader, and I've used it for them, help them speed up um, their healing, and it's very, very effective. Actually, I was surprised. Didn't think it'd be that good. But yeah, it's a viable option. Possibly not too good for a beginner, but it's there. It's there. It's a good perk. So, David next. A lot of people say this could be the best person to begin with, based purely on an economy standpoint. We're gonna live forever grants you stacks for every single um, survivor you unhook safely up to a maximum of four stacks there. Each, stacks, each stack gives you 25% extra blood points at the end of the game and that means it goes over the usual limits. It can potentially double your whole blood point total for a match. So say if you come out the game and you've got uh, 12,000 blood points, if you safely unhooked four people you would get 24,000 points at the end of the game which is very handy for leveling up very quickly and a more advanced perk but it's also very useful if you can get the hang of it, he's dead hard arguably the strongest exhaustion perk as I say in the uh, description there um, but yeah it's more of an advanced perk and a lot of people don't know how to use it effectively and they argue against it with the wrong point of view um, Feng Min, solid choice as a new, as a new, uh, new character Live is a great exhaustion perk, especially if you um, don't know how to loot the killer yet. Uh, what that does is every time you vault over a window or a pallet, so long as you've got the perk activated, this is it'll um, give you a sprint burst for three seconds, which can help you get away from the killer really quickly. Um, and then alert, it's a really good information perk as well. What that does is every time the killer breaks or uh, breaks a pallet or kicks the generator, it'll show that killer's aura for a set amount of time depending on what tier the uh, the perks are that's really powerful really strong and kind of underrated i'd say jake is next iron will is perhaps my favorite survivor perk it's a perk that i pretty much now refuse to take off if i've got it available it's that good at tier 3 it reduces your uh, sounds of pain while you're injured by 100 percent which means your uh, 
pretty much signed to a killer. Uh, so yeah, if you, get, you've, if you get hurt and you're able to avoid line of sight and you can duke the killer and you know, you get away from him, they won't be able to find you just by audio. They've got to find other hints and clues to find you. And a lot of killers these days use audio as their main source of finding you. So Iron Will for me is, if I was to pick someone to start with now, if I was to go back and start from scratch, Jake would be the character I start out with. Level up first, then I'd probably go David, then I'd probably go Nia, then Dwight, then Feng, and then maybe some others. But that's that's what I'd go for. But you might be different, you might want a different playstyle or whatever. It choice is all up to you, obviously. At the end of the day, only you can decide. Um, a lot of people also suggest Claudette and Meg, and I would advise heavily against those two characters. Um, the reasons why people suggest them based on two perks or one perk for each each character. Claudette, they usually say self-care is really good for new starters. But the problem with self-care is yes, it allows you to heal up from injured, you know, whenever you need to. But the problem is when you're new, if a killer finds you to injure you, chances are you haven't quite grasped the concept of the game or the mechanics of the game to be able to stop yourself going from injured to dying chances are you're going to get dained by the killer and self-care or not you're still going to get hooked and the process is going to repeat itself over and over again chances are without, without self-care you're not going to be thinking about where to go to heal up you're not going to go to a stupid location and start self-caring when it's not beneficial to you you're going to start looking at teammates you're going to start thinking more objectively and more directly about what to do with the game how to go about it you'll learn to work on generators through through the pain barrier through when you're injured which is always a good thing to do at most points in the game so i'd advise against self-care and claudette for that reason uh meg um another similar one um sprint burst is the one you'll get recommended which is a very easy perk to use i will grant sprint burst offers you a, a burst of speed um when you press the sprint when you press a sprint button when you haven't got any exhaustion on your on the right side of the uh on the right side of your screen um yeah it's a good perk at times but it's it can often lead you to walking around the map a lot it'll make you hold on to that sprint burst for the vast majority of the game even though even at tier 3 it only has a 60 second cooldown which means chances are if you go in gen to gen generator to generator as fast as you can and you're going to be using up sprint burst all those times the chances are by the time the killer comes you're halfway through generator the chances are you'll have sprint burst back anyway and you can sprint burst away people starting out with the game who don't know how to use sprint burst will generally walk around waste a lot of time a lot of your resource that you haven't got available to you killers can easily snowball on the game get a lot of momentum and the less time you give them to get that it's all the better for you as a team sprint burst is only going to slow you down i'd recommend not putting it on unless you're willing to use it often and consistently don't put it on because it's just going to make your gameplay a lot worse and it'll make you play it'll make you unable to learn the better areas of the game and how to lose the killer it'll stop you from getting into good positions to loop the killer it'll stop you from learning jungle gym because you'll be holding on to this crutch perk to get you away from the killer so again i recommend not using it i recommend not leveling up meg for sprint burst i would level up meg for quick and quiet which it, to me is her best perk that's the one i'd level up but again it's up to you only you can make the choice but yeah that was that tip and that's the guide all done guys, um, I hope you took something away from it, whether small or big, um, really appreciate you checking it out, um, if you like the video again please like and subscribe, um, at the bottom of the uh, description I'll try and throw in some links to some really good content creators that you can take even more and possibly even better information away from to adapt your game to where you want it to be, um, yeah we'll leave it there and again thanks for watching, see you later guys.